welcome back everyone it's me matt thank you so much for joining me today we are discussing the canadian armed forces once again and particularly trying to become part of it and the teamwork that is involved in being part of the canadian military now i want to make a massive disclaimer before going into this video this footage that we're looking at today is from a series called basic up uh, it was a old canadian armed forces public television show that reviewed uh, basic troops going through their training a really good show and i encourage you to watch it it is on youtube uh, if you wish to if you're going to become part of the canadian forces very useful information lessons to be learned from it i want to reinforce though that the stuff that is going on in this footage is not to be used as training uh, doctrine or to be used as reference uh, and that some of the training and some of the styles of a sort of leadership and corrective discipline has potentially changed uh, from this uh, footage recording uh, back in the day to today so please be cognizant of that it is something that I want to make very clear uh, and also this video clearly is now not endorsed by the Canadian forces it's just my own personal opinion uh, and more of an awareness for you to discuss a little bit about uh, leadership because I did make a video recently uh, it was well received on the basic up series as well on room inspections and what to expect and things not to do and it was pretty well received you guys enjoyed it so I thought I'd do another one and in today's video we're talking about teamwork yes and how to look after your fellow soldier uh, or whoever branch of military you're in and specifically sentries uh, how you look after one another in a team can be quite detrimental if you're not paying attention and you're not aware of your surroundings as to what's going on what tends to happen in the military is we have moments of reprieve in training especially basic training it's hard work right it's tough it can be a challenge things have changed specifically since i was in the british military going through basic training for a year i did 42 weeks of, of training uh, at army foundation college harrogate so my basic training was pretty hardcore for its time uh, but things have changed but one thing i always remember is don't forget your sentries don't forget those who are looking after equipment or guarding an area that has been left uh, whilst other people are doing administration i.e eating sleeping whatever it may be that you've been tasked with and unfortunately in this episode of basic up the platoon that's going through this basic training uh learned the hard way as to not leave your sentries behind so let's take a look at the footage and see what you think there was two sentry at the ammo point and they stay all dinner time there Look how many you are here. Nobody went there to relay them. They didn't even eat. Well done, people. Well done. Okay? Make sure next time every 20 minutes like we did yesterday, you are supposed to go and relay them. They stay there for all lunchtime. So as you can see, there's been a new contender of staff coming into the play here. He's a PO. Uh, he was actually in my recent uh, room inspection video too, and he's a pretty hard charger, okay? As I want to reinforce, you know, the leadership styles of different instructors uh, varies between uh, branch, military, unit, whatever it may be. I want to reinforce the fact that although this uh, individual's leadership style may be a little bit more abrupt and the corrective measures he's about to use are a little bit more abrupt, please don't let that deter you from trying to get into the Canadian Forces. You'll also notice some of the corrective discipline that the instructors are using. Again, please don't reference or benchmark from this. Things have changed, and uh, I think the real focus of this video is to look at what's happening and why it's happening, and the reasons why it's happening. Now, just to reinforce the situation of what has occurred, the troops have put two sentries on a location at the range. They've left them there all through the afternoon for lunch so the rest of the platoon has had their lunch they've had their meal and they have forgot to actually pick up new people for sentries what should normally happen is you rotate through the platoon once you've eaten normally the first two that have eaten are the first two to then go relieve the sentries that are covering whatever location or looking after equipment etc etc first of all it's fair <laughs> second of all it makes sense third of all it increases that team cohesion and morale right there's no point doing this uh, we'll do half an hour you do half an hour thing just take turns right every 10 15 minutes once you've had your food go take over the sentries once the next team's done their food go take over the sentries it's just common sense the real kicker in this situation though unfortunately is integrity and honesty let's talk a little bit more about it and the instructor is going to go a little bit intensive here again i have muted the language uh there is only a couple of instances where there is some some swearing but again times have changed uh this footage is old and please don't reference from it for the type of discipline or corrective measures that have been taken in this video let me take over from this point i freaking asked you freaking people did they get freaking relief to eat and i was told yes now, in this situation, 
it's hard to tell what's actually happened. Has someone lied to the staff? saying that they've had reliefs in place for the sentries and someone's actually gone out there and relieved them in place of their duty? Or did someone just get confused and think they'd sent people? Or someone presumed that they had sent people and then therefore had said they had? Either way, <laughs> this isn't a good start, right? So not relieving sentries is already going to be a communal problem, right? I.e. the group are going to get in a lot of trouble because as a team, you work together, right? There's not one leader takes the brunt. Everybody should have been aware, and especially in a basic training setting. Uh, you're not leaders yet, right? You're all troops new. You are giving core seniors who, you know, if it's core senior that's tasked to do that, then he should be or she should be the one that's allocating the sentries to be relieved. But in this scenario, unfortunately, either a dishonest answer was given or just they had no awareness. They weren't. They had no clue. So they just said yes for the for the sake of it, right? Which is still not a good idea, right? If this happens, right? If you have realized that, hey, we didn't put sentries out. Be honest, right? If you realize halfway through supper, right, or breakfast or lunch or whatever, sleep or whatever is going on, right? The admin that you're doing, just go tell the staff. You you're gonna probably get in a lot of trouble regardless. But believe it or not, I've seen people, including actually myself get what's called a blue ticket or a blue write-up, which is a good positive write-up on training for just being open with staff, being honest with them and saying, yeah, I've made a mistake, I need to correct it, right? In my particular example, it was regarding ammunition on PLQ. Uh, we had no ammo in the hide and we got contact by Op4 and we're all basically with no ammo shouting bang, bang, bang. Yeah, not a good idea. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, a select few of us were captured so forth by the Op4 and taken back to the CP. And uh, they basically said, like, what is happening? They laid into us. Got, we've got in a lot of trouble. Uh, and I basically just owned up and said, yeah, I'll take extreme ownership of this. I should have, you know, within my section or within the whole platoon, gone to find ammo. We didn't have ammo. We're in a tactical sense, right? The reason why we didn't have ammo from the platoon is because we didn't actually think we were supposed to be issued it yet. We weren't proactive, though. There's no excuse. There's no option to get around that. So I took the hit and I got right up for being good, like being honest and being open. And they appreciated and respected the fact that if you make a mistake, you own up to it and get on with it. And unfortunately, in this situation, it may have not gone that way. Those two out there, who are they? What's their names? Howell and Osborne. Yo. Howell and Osborne are going to be the only ones to eat supper night. The rest of you are going to spend a freaking entire supper period pumping push-ups, watching them eat. What kind of teamwork is that? That is totally, totally freaking unsat. Relay 1, get where you've got to go. Relay 2, get that freaking place cleaned up. You two are supposed to move that going out yourself. I am not freaking impressed. No more smoke breaks. No more breaks of any kind whatsoever. What? Guys, water can't be at the back, okay? It's always been like that. So this is where things start going downhill fast. Not for the, you know, experience of them about to be corrected for what happened, but it's more, again, the team side of things. If you listen to the tone and the context of what it sounds like the core senior or someone within the platoon is talking about, they're talking about where their water bottle goes, probably regarding a core standard or where something should be or whatever it else may be. Listen to the tone, right? It's always been like that. They've got a little bit of sass there, right? They've got a little bit of attitude. And that is because that's beginning an infighting, right? Someone somewhere, there's been a, uh, someone stirring the pot saying, you know, well, we should have done it. We did, you know, getting in each other's faces about it is not the way to go here. It's working together, right? You know that you're going to probably get in trouble. There's going to be some sort of corrective discipline, but don't start getting in each other's faces about it. Work together. Just accept the corrective measures that are coming. Do not start infighting because it can just get worse and that's not what they're looking for. When times are rough, you stick together, you look out for one another, you don't start infighting. It's not a good thing to have. Why is it changing? The water canteen is at the back of the pack. Everybody steadied up. All right, everybody picks up their weapon. Three ranks over here, right now. Over there, there's a chair and a box. You sit on there's two box lunches. You guys go over there, enjoy your supper. Okay. If you want to go inside, that's fine. Take the weapons in with you, not a problem.
So it's pretty obvious what's about to happen. Obviously, the PO is going to give corrective discipline to the platoon to try and ensure that they take lessons from this. They learn from this mistake. Uh, he has tasked the other two soldiers that were on sentry to go and have their own lunch or dinner or whatever else it may be. Uh, relax, sit down on the chairs, go and take their time and obviously not be involved in the corrective uh, discipline that's going to be coming ahead of them soon here. Once again, I really just want to reinforce that the corrective measures that this platoon's about to get uh, is not something that uh, I'm going to specifically relate to. It's not reference. does not mean it's going to happen during your training. This footage is is, is old. It's from the basic up uh, episode. Uh, so please take that for what it is and with a pinch of salt. Uh, you know, corrective measures, corrective disciplines come in many different forms. Uh, just bear that in mind, okay? Use the chair. Sit down. Sit down. Relax. Today was one of the most disgusting displays of lack of teamwork that I have ever seen in all the time that I have spent here at CFLRS. You are my 19th platoon, and I have never, at this point in the training, seen such a horrible, horrible lack of teamwork. Absolutely disgusting. And quite frankly, people who can't even look after their teammates are not the sort of people that I want to go on a mission with anywhere in this world. Because I can't trust you to make sure that your wingers got freaking lunch to eat and that you didn't leave them standing in the sun for an hour and that you told me that they had been relieved. One, 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 two. Wipe it out in front of you like this. Hold two hands. Squat position, change! Squat! I wonder if they're going to come over and relieve us. I wonder if they're going to remember me. How long are they going to leave me here for? You put them through an hour. You're going to be in this position until they're done eating. You to ask a question? He doesn't give a false answer. If he doesn't know, or she, they say, I don't know. So there's the key point to this, right? If you don't know, don't make it up. Don't make up an answer. It's just not going to go well for you. Sometimes you might get lucky, right? You might make up an answer about something that you don't know about, and you know you're going to get in trouble if you don't answer it one way or the other. And you pick an answer that you think is going to work to make the staff impressed or happy. And sometimes you'll get away with it and get lucky. Sometimes you won't. And when you don't, it's really, really not going to help your situation than if you were just honest and said, honestly, staff, I have no idea. Master Corporal Sergeant, whoever, right? I have no idea. I apologize. I'm not aware of this situation. I do not know, right? Yeah, you might get in some trouble, but that has the integrity to say, well, at least they're honest, right? At least they don't know, right? Don't fall into the trap. Don't fall into that trap. Just be open because it's part of your training, right? It's part of your learning experience is to experience that ability to be cognizant of what's going on around you. And if you're not aware of things, learn from it and be aware of things, but don't make things up. It just makes it so much worse. And this corrective discipline that they're getting would probably be not as bad as it would be than if they were just open and honest and said, hey, sorry, staff, we have no idea who was supposed to replace the sentries. We screwed up. But you people failed in that. You told me they had been relieved. And they said, no, in fact, they had not been. They were out there the entire time in the hot sun without anything to eat. Looking after this platoon's ammunition. Oh, Get down, Wong. Now, if you're on the other end of the spectrum, and like these two sentries are right now, uh, first of all, don't take this personally, right? It's never fun watching your buddies getting uh, corrective actions placed upon them, right? It's not fun. Uh, but it's also not fun being left behind, right? So don't take it personally that, A, they did leave you behind, right? Teams make mistakes. That's what makes teams stronger is learning from them, right? Don't take it personally that you were left behind. And don't take it personally 
that you were not part of that involved corrective discipline or whatever measures were taking place to learn from that situation. Uh, these two probably don't feel good at all right now, as you'll see from the uh, instructor talking to them. It's not a good feeling, but uh, it is what it is. You know, you learn from it, you move on. Uh, you know, you in that situation, if you were that sentry, uh, for the rest of your career, going to remember to reinforce the teams. Hey, make sure you don't forget the sentries, because at one point I was one of those sentries that left behind. But don't get involved with the tit for tat. Don't sort of get involved when you get back to the platoon lines or the hide of arguing about it. Water under the bridge, you move on, you adapt, you move on, and you get better as a team, right? Stand up! Be thankful this isn't the FNC-1. It weighed about five pounds heavier. Get that weapon in front of you, Shave. That is what team building is about. We do it all together. Don't think this was some sort of theatrical stunt, right? They owed you guys a meal, and they've now paid you back a meal. <coughs> you understand where I'm coming from? Yes, Bill. Don't you be sitting here thinking that they're suffering for you. That ain't the way it worked. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, Bill. Don't you two feel bad when you go back over and rejoin your teammates? Do not feel bad. They earned that. Get where I'm coming from? so there you have it everyone a little lesson learned especially for those going into the canadian forces just be aware right look out for one another to be aware of what's going on in your surroundings when you're having your food you're relaxing it's your time to have a bit of downtime realize that everyone needs that downtime and it can be just a slight lapse of judgment that make that error and it's not the best thing to have happen as a team uh, you want to work together as buddies. The buddy-buddy system is really, really helpful at preventing those mistakes from happening because someone else is going to catch your mistake. Buddy-buddy works well. I know it's a little cringy, those who are watching this saying, oh my goodness, he just said buddy-buddy, but it's true. It does help. Just having your oppo, we call it in the British Army, your oppo, or your operational partner, to work with you to make sure that you don't forget things, you don't lose things, you don't, you know, etc., etc. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and learned a little about how to become a better team member in uh, your basic training or throughout your entire career. And and uh, if you didn't enjoy the video, please leave me a like. Feel free to share it along with your fellow compadres. And also, uh, if you want to support my channel, you can go check out my Patreon, my PayPal. If you want to see more of this content, click on the little bell by the subscribe button. And I hope to see you next time. All the best, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.